Now that we have a group of bit words, we need to transform each of those words into a complex symbol that will ultimately occupy our FFT bins for our OFDM symbol. To do this, we need to specify a few things, uh, the most important being the word to symbol map. And this is going to be an array of complex symbols, um, each with its own unique index and um, hopefully with all unique entries. And when we get a group of binary uh, bits or a bit word in, we'd like to take the decimal equivalent of that binary word and use that as our index for this array. Uh, therefore, each group of bits uh, will have a unique complex symbol to represent it so that we can actually transmit it in the time domain. Aside from that, we also need to know the number of subcarriers. And of course, we need to specify our parallel group of bit words coming in. Now the next thing we need to do is to make some sort of loop um, because we're going to be going through each uh, parallel word that's coming in and mapping it individually to this word symbol map. So we can do this real quick by going to programming, structures, and creating a for loop. And as we talked about, we want to do one for each subcarrier, uh, which is ultimately going to be for each word in our input. Um, then we need to give our word to symbol map. And note what just happened here. Uh, it automatically indexed our word to symbol map. And we don't want to do that. Um, so let's right click and choose disable indexing. However, for our parallel words, we would like to index. And this simply means that each iteration of the loop, it's going to automatically look at the next word. So it's going to start at the very first iteration by looking at the first word. And then the second time around, it's going to look at the second, and so on and so forth. So it kind of takes care of uh, the mess of indexing each word individually for us, which is what we want to do. Next, we want to index our word to symbol map, again, um, using the parallel group of bits. Uh, however, we can't just feed it a binary array. We need to um, somehow convert it to an integer so that the index array function can uh, properly uh, function. And so we go ahead and put in this conversion here. This is simply the Boolean array to number function that's built into LabVIEW. Um, it's important that you read the help file um, up here and to see how it's working. Uh, because of LabVIEW's convention, it takes the very first element in the array to be the least significant bit. So that means that 0, 0, 1 will not correspond to 1, but rather to um, decimal 4. So just keep that in mind when we're accessing our word to symbol map uh, that the entries are going to correspond uh, according to LabVIEW's convention. With that, we're uh, pretty much ready to, to finish it up. The element that comes out is the complex symbol that corresponds to the group of bits for each iteration. And by letting it in, uh, automatically enable indexing for the output, we build our parallel symbol out without having to do any additional work. And that's all there is to it. If you have any other questions, I encourage you to check out the CNX module or email the author.